Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson about natural places. Uh it's summer here in Canada. So, it is enjoyable to go to see some of the natural places around me. It's fun to be outdoors. So, today I'll teach you about I think just over 30 words. No phrases today. All vocabulary words. English vocabulary words about different natural places that you can visit. A few of these I think are only in North America. Some of these are only in other parts of the world but most of them are common English words that you need to know if you want to talk about natural places. And you might be wondering what's a natural place? Well, heads up. Some of the simpler ones. A beach is a natural place. A marsh is a natural place and a geyser is a natural place and I'll talk about those three and more in this English lesson about natural places. Oasis. So, an oasis. First of all, it's a fun word to say. Oasis. Oasis. It's also a band I think but they might spell it differently. An oasis is a place usually in the desert where there is some water. So, if you were walking through the desert and you saw trees up ahead, you think to yourself, there must be water there. It must be an oasis. So, if you ever find yourself walking through the desert and you see trees ahead, it will probably be an oasis, a place where you can find some water. Hopefully, it's not a mirage. A mirage is like when you think you see something and then it's actually your imagination or the wind and the sand playing tricks on you. But an oasis is a beautiful place in the desert. Uh usually where you can get a drink of water if the water is safe to drink. Uh you can go and get some at an oasis. Geyser. So, a geyser is an interesting phenomenon. It's when water in the ground it heats up and then it shoots out of the ground. Water and steam shoot out of the ground because deep in the earth's crust there is some sort of hot rock or lava. Something that's heating up water and making it shoot up out of the ground. As was mentioned, there was recently a geyser that I guess exploded almost uh in Yellowstone. I think it was Yellowstone uh where there was so much force from the water and steam that it actually um was a it, it kind of shot up a little more vigorously than normal. I don't think anyone was hurt but anyways, a geyser, hot steam and water that shoots out of the ground and a hot spring. As with a geyser, sometimes water is heated up in the earth and comes to the surface. A hot spring is a naturally occurring uh pool of water that is very very hot. Sometimes it's just the right temperature and you can go swimming in a hot spring. Um but sometimes a hot spring is too hot to touch or to go in. But uh sometimes there are areas where you can go to hot springs because they might have healing uh qualities. The hot spring might be said to make your body feel better. I know when I'm really sore from working on the farm, I wish there was a hot spring near us that I could go sit in to soothe my body. A marsh. So, the difference between a marsh and a swamp is that a marsh usually doesn't have trees but has lots of water and it's usually really shallow water. Like, if you have really long boots on like hip waders that go up to here. Do you know they make boots that go up to here? You could probably walk through a marsh. A swamp on the other hand is a place with lots of shallow water but it usually has trees. Um we have marshes near us. We have some swamps but not as many as you would have like in Florida or another place like that. Um but again, a marsh, a place with very shallow water. We sometimes say low-lying water uh with no trees but lots of grass and the types of things that grow in shallow water. And a swamp then would have some low-lying water but also trees growing in it. Uh kind of a fun word to say. Marsh and swamp. A bog. So, this is a little hard to explain. A bog is like a marsh 
but it also has peat. It has a certain kind of moss that you can find. So, a bog is it's not so much like a marsh has lots of water. A bog has lots of really wet earth with some water um and then you can usually find different kinds of moss. Peat moss in particular. In Canada in some parts of Ontario, we have uh bogs that are filled with peat moss and we dig it up and we sell it. Um it makes really good potting soil. Let's talk a little bit about the difference between a plain and a prairie. A plain is a very flat piece of earth, okay? So, if you have mountains, sometimes the mountains end and you have a large plain where the gra- it's just flat and you can see for miles and miles. By the way, even though I use kilometers, I still say miles and miles when talking about being able to see really far. In western Canada and in the western US, we have what are called the prairies. So, a prairie is simply a plain. It's the same thing. It's just a different word and it's a word we use in North America. So, if you go to the province of Saskatchewan, you will see the prairies. We actually call Manitoba, Saskatchewan and part of Alberta the prairie provinces because there's lots of very, very flat plains um which we call prairie. A dune. A dune is a very, very large pile of sand or a hill made of sand. We have lakes in Ontario. I live close to the Great Lakes and there are a lot of dunes around the Great Lakes, around some of them. So, as you walk to the beach, you walk through the sand dunes to get there. Um it's very fun. Um you take your shoes off, you take your socks off, you walk barefoot through the dunes and the sand feels really nice on your feet. So, A dune is a very large hill made of sand instead of other types of dirt. Like instead of clay or any kind of other dirt, it is a big um hill of sand. And there was recently a movie, uh Dune and Dune 2 which take place on a planet that is mostly sand, 99% sand. And so, there are lots of dunes on that planet. It's science fiction though. It's not real. A cave. A cave is a natural um basically large hole in a rock. One that you can walk into sometimes. So, as you look at rock, you sometimes see holes in the rock and if you can go in, we call this a cave. This may have been someone's house uh hundreds of years ago. Uh someone might have lived in a cave. A cave if it's big enough would be a natural place to live. If it was five, six, seven hundred years ago or a thousand years ago, maybe you lived in a cave. But uh yes, we do not have a lot of caves around here. If I go to the north, there is what's called an escarpment and there are some caves there. I'll explain what an escarpment is in a bit. But yes, a cave is basically probably water over time remove the rock or perhaps the rock moved in such a way over time to create uh what we would call a void in the rock. An area in the rock that you could go into if you wanted to. A bay. So, a bay is a large protected area of water connected to a lake or ocean or the sea. So, you can see here there's usually one entrance to a bay but it's kind of um kind of sheltered. Like if you have a big lake, there might be a bay at the bottom of the lake where it has kind of an entrance to the lake but the bay itself um is kind of separate. It's kind it's usually a curve. A bay usually has a curve to it. You can see this one is shaped like the letter C. Um but uh, a bay would be a really cool sheltered area close to uh right on the edge or the shore of a lake or on the coast of the ocean. An archipelago. Now, I used to pronounce this wrong. Even English speakers sometimes say words wrong but it's archipelago. This is a series of islands 
uh, usually in a row. Um, there are many of these in the world. Like I'm pretty sure Hawaii is an archipelago. I think Japan is an archipelago. I think anytime you have a series of islands, this is the term you would use. I guess it's probably an underwater mountain range and you can just see the tops of the mountains. Does that make sense? That's what most islands are. The top of an undersea mountain I think. But an archipelago, a series of islands that kind of form a chain. Sometimes we use that term as well. A chain of islands. A lagoon. So, a lagoon is a mostly enclosed area of water. Salt water which means it's part of the ocean where there might be one little area to enter. So, different than a bay, this lagoon as you can see is mostly enclosed. Mostly surrounded by land. So, a lagoon is a big area on an island or on the coast of an by an ocean where you have um it is a body of water that is connected to the ocean by a certain section but it is just kind of enclosed on almost every side. This one looks beautiful by the way. The beautiful blue color of that lagoon. Very very neat. Very very cool. A cliff. So, a simpler one. A cliff is simply a sheer drop where the land ends and goes almost straight down. We call this a cliff. You might walk to the edge of a cliff and look down and see water. You might walk to the edge of a cliff and look down and simply see land. A cliff can happen along the coast. A cliff can happen just anywhere. It can happen in a mountain range. Some people like to climb cliffs. I don't like to climb. I'm afraid of heights. And some people like to go uh cliff jumping into water. I don't like doing that either. But a cliff is a very sharp drop off of uh usually a mountain or other rocky area. A delta. So, a delta is an area where a large river flows into a lake or ocean. So, you can see here as a river gets close to a larger body of water, it will start to split. And we call this split, this whole area is called a delta. If you follow the Mississippi River in the United States, you get to the Mississippi Delta where the Mississippi flows into the Gulf of Mexico. So, a delta is the area where a river flows into a larger body of water uh, and it usually breaks into different little um I don't know what you would call those rivulets maybe but it breaks into smaller little tributaries and flows into uh, a larger body of water. Um a canyon. So, a canyon is a large area usually with a river or stream in the bottom where I think the river has eroded the rock over time. And so, you have this higher area and then you have the canyon. So, if you go to the Grand Canyon, you'll just see lots of higher areas like this plateau and you'll see a lot of lower areas. This lower area is called the canyon. Um so, you have a canyon right here. Um and again, the Grand Canyon would be a place where I would love to visit. I would love to go and see the Grand Canyon uh, someday with Jen. I'll, I should take her on a trip. So, there's something called a plateau. I described that far high area as a plateau. This is a plateau. So, it's when you have a lower area of land and then when it goes up, the top part is called a plateau. We also have what's called a butte. This is very North American. Very very much the United States would have these. A butte is a smaller raised area um like that. And then we have a mesa which is kind of in the middle. So, let me go back. These are mostly from the United States Midwest. Plateau is a little more universal but a plateau is a large flat area. Um I actually kind of live on a plateau. When you go to the Great Lakes, there's an escarpment and then I'm kind of on this raised area in the middle. A butte is of course, a smaller one. Butte. 
and then a mesa would be somewhere in the middle size wise. So, you have three different raised areas. Um if you watch any American westerns like cowboy movies, you will most likely see images like this. You'll see plateaus and buttes and mesas and you'll hear those words used. A waterfall. I live close to Niagara Falls. That made me thirsty when I said waterfall. I live close to Niagara Falls. It is a large waterfall. A waterfall is where a river or a stream flows over a cliff basically and you get what looks like this. A really nice waterfall. Waterfalls can be very loud. There can be lots of spray that comes up off a waterfall. If you go to Niagara Falls, there's an area where there's just mist all the time because water vapor or water is spraying up a little bit and it's just in the air which makes it really cool in the winter by the way because everything around that area freezes really really nicely. But a waterfall is an area where water where a river or creek or stream flows over a cliff and goes down to whatever is below. A hill and a valley. So, a hill is of course a very tall area. It's not a mountain. In my mind, the difference between a hill and a mountain is size but also what it is made of. You can see this hill is covered in grass. A hill can be covered in grass. It can be covered in trees. It basically is made from dirt. There might be a few rocks here and there but in my mind, when I think about a hill, a hill is something that's covered in grass and trees and you can climb the hill if you're um someone who likes winter, you might ski down a hill. Uh you can go tobogganing down a hill as well in the winter. But a hill would be made of dirt, a raised area formed from dirt with lots of grass and maybe trees on it. Uh, a valley, sorry, as opposed to a mountain which is mostly rocks. Rocks with some trees that get smaller and smaller as you go up. Eventually, there's no trees and at the very top, there might even be snow. So, a hill made of dirt, a mountain made of rock. That would be the simple definition. And then, a valley would be the area between two mountains or between two really large hills. So, you can see here down in the valley, the part at the very bottom, you can see the mountains come together and you have the valley there. So, I would call that a mountain because it you can see the rocks. The mountain is very rocky. It does have some grass and trees but it looks a lot different than a hill. Um but yes, the area at the bottom, I would call a valley. A channel. Now, this is where even I got a little confused. My understanding is that a channel is water that connects two larger bodies of water between two land masses and that a strait is water that connects two larger bodies of water between two land masses. It got really confusing because even when I was reading the definition, the difference between a channel and a strait, it literally said a channel is a piece of water between two land masses that connects two larger bodies of water as opposed to a strait which is a a piece of water that connects two larger bodies of water between two land masses. So, they're not the same thing but I don't know the difference and I don't know if it matters for this lesson. So, this is a channel. You might be familiar with the English channel which separates England from mainland Europe. So, it's a section of the ocean which we call a channel uh and then a strait. There are lots of straits in the world as well. Just a smaller bit of water that connects two larger bits of water. So, again, there is a difference. I don't know what it is but hopefully, (laughs) hopefully you will remember it. A gulf. So, someone asked if a gulf and a bay are the same. In my mind, a gulf is usually gigantic. So, we have the Gulf of Mexico. It's a huge area surrounded by a lot of land where you can still get out to the ocean. 
So I think when you look at a map of the world, you will see gulfs and they are usually quite a bit bigger than a bay. So the Gulf of Mexico is the most familiar to me. Many people in Canada will travel to Florida or Mississippi or Alabama in order to um go on a vacation because um the Gulf of Mexico is a great place to go in the winter. It's nice and warm and beautiful. A glacier. Um so am I saying that right do you think? Let me check my pronunciation of a uh, glacier because you can you hear how I'm saying it? Um let me see here. Let me get my little earbud out. Yeah, let's check the British. Ah, I see. So, it's because I'm using the North American pronunciation. So, glacier. Basically, a large river but it's not water. It's ice and snow. It obviously moves a lot more slowly um but this is a glacier. I think if you're in Britain, you would say glacier. I probably say both but glacier just rolled off my tongue. I think that's the pronunciation I am most familiar with. So, you obviously need to go really far north or maybe really far south um but if you see something like this, you're probably in Norway or Greenland or Iceland and you will or northern Canada and you will see a glacier, a slow moving river of ice and snow. And then of course, a beach. I think we're all familiar with what a beach is. If you go to the ocean or if you go to a lake and if it has a sandy shore like this, we call this area a beach. We actually have rocky beaches in Canada as well where there's small rocks but traditionally, when people think of a beach, they think of a place like this. A place where there is sand, where there is sun, where you can play volleyball on the beach, you can play frisbee, you can lay on the beach. Uh, If you like basking in the sun, there's a phrase from last week Um, but a beach is a very nice place to go. And then canal. So, (laughs) this is an interesting one because this is a lesson about natural places and I realized as I was doing the lesson that this is not natural. A canal is not natural. A canal is what we would say is man-made. So, a canal is a a deep a deeper area of water where boats can go that usually connects one place to another. In Canada, there is a canal that connects Lake Ontario to Lake Erie. It's called the Welland Canal. So, this slide doesn't belong in this lesson. A canal is not man-made or is not natural. A canal is man-made. So, oops. (laughs) A small mistake. A little bonus slide for you. A canal an area that connects uh two bodies of water that's made by people. Um now, it is some place to visit. It's fun to go to the well and canal and watch the really large boats go through. I do enjoy that. So, a canal. A volcano. A volcano is something that is either dormant which means nothing's happening or it might erupt which means lava molten rock just comes out of the top. Uh recently, there was a volcano that erupted in Iceland, wasn't it? Two years ago or a year ago. Um very cool. I would love from a safe distance to watch a volcano erupt at night. Like this looks like it's at night. It would be very, very cool but it is very dangerous. Not something that I should uh do anytime soon but I would love to see that. It would be fun to see a volcano erupt. An island is of course uh, a piece of land in the middle of a body of water uh, and it can be any size. Like we would say Japan is an island nation okay because their country is surrounded by water on every side. Um when you go out in a lake, there can be an island in the middle of a lake. There can be an island in the middle of a river. In fact, the river I live on if you go down a few kilometers, there is an island in the middle of the river but an island, an area of land in a body of water that is surrounded by water on all sides. And then a peninsula. Kind of hard to explain but you see this little piece of land here that juts out into the water. That's a good verb. Juts. 
So, a peninsula is an area of land that's surrounded on three sides or almost totally surrounded by water but still there is a little piece connecting it to land. The funny thing is I actually live in the Niagara Peninsula. We have a lake to the north, a lake to the south and a river to the east. So, there is actually water on three sides of the piece of uh where I live in Canada. So, we call it the Niagara Peninsula. I don't know if it's a hundred percent a peninsula but that is what we call it. The Niagara Peninsula. A very cool place to live and I live pretty much in the middle of it. And then there's what's called an escarpment. An escarpment is it's basically a cliff or a steep slope and it and it goes for quite a while. Like when you go north of here eventually there's an escarpment that goes down to the lake. The lake is about two kilometers. The escarpment is two kilometers from the lake and then there's just this steep um it might be almost a 50 meter drop and it's in some places it's a cliff in other places it's a steep slope and we call it an escarpment. Kind of hard to say but the Niagara escarpment is a very cool area to go. When we go hiking It's often on the escarpment. We go to the escarpment to go hiking because there are a lot of hiking trails and um you can't really live on the escarpment. So, it's this natural uh wild area where you can go and do some hiking. You can even do some camping there if you wanted to. 